So we have this lovely shot of the beach in Iceland. And before I do anything to this image to progress it further, I need to make sure that it's fit for the intended purpose. So if I wish to use this uh, in a magazine and cover the entirety of an A4 page with this image, I need to make sure this image contains the right kind of quality so that it looks good when it's printed out. To do that, we have to head up to the most important dialog box in Photoshop, which is not the most interesting, but it's definitely an essential first step. So when I click in here, we're given some values that are going to look fairly similar, not in terms of the numbers in here, but certainly you'll get measurements in centimeters and it will tell you quite commonly that the resolution is set to 72 pixels per inch. So what on earth does this mean? Well, if I just zoom into the image a little bit closer at this moment in time, this photograph contains 72 pixels for every square inch running across and running up the image. So this is what it is, a pixel. It's an amalgamation of two words, picture element, and inside each pixel is a single color. So we need to make sure that when it's printed out, there are enough of these tiny little squares to give us a lovely full colored image. And we don't have a low quality photo where we can see this blockiness because you may heard it referred to as pixelation or your image might look blurred. So the values you see in here tells me that this image is 137 centimeters wide and 91 centimeters tall. So at first glance, I think well, that's great. You know, I could use this for just about any project that I could think of. However, this value for resolution is not good enough for print. It's a barely good enough for a screen based presentation on an overhead projector, for example. So what we need to do is go down first of all and click on resample to turn off the checkbox. And what that will do is it will create a link between not only the width and the height, but the resolution. And then you head straight for the value for resolution and you type in your desired amount. So if I type in 300, which is what we should always aim for for print, that's the minimum kind of quality value we're looking for. When this image is then shrunk down and it packs more of these pixels into a square inch, we'll have 300 of them now instead of 72. But also notice, that by increasing the quality, you have to reduce the physical size of the image. That's how digital photographs work. The bigger they appear in print, the lower the quality that will, there will be. Ultimately, if you make it smaller, the quality will increase. So this is fine for professional print, but I now know with confidence that this image really shouldn't be used any bigger than, well, 33 centimeters wide by 22 centimeters tall. So that's how you discover the natural kind of organic maximum file size for your image. Now, if we we're going to use this, say, for a screen presentation, like a digital magazine, then um, it's going to be viewed just on screen. You could reduce that to 150. And then in here, well, I mean, we've got plenty to work with because the size of this is 3,888 pixels wide and 2,592 pixels tall. It is plenty big enough to work with. If we wanted to use this, say, for an on-screen presentation or, or, or some kind of overhead projector presentation, you can go as low as 96 pixels per square inch. Um, and you'll see that every time the image size is increasing all the time. Um, and if you, used to, if you wish to use this image on the web, well, you can go down to 72, but the web really doesn't take any, any notice of the value in here for resolution. It only cares about what the physical width and height is of the artwork in pixels. But for us, well, this is going to be 300. And with that done, I'll go down to the bottom and I'll click OK. So that is how we identify how big our images can be used for either screen or print purposes.